paleontology, it's a fascinating science. It's about as close as you'd ever get to time travel. Forget about time machines. Dinosaurs are the horses that take you back to the end of the Cretaceous, down to the Jurassic, and even further beyond. Dinosaurs, or for that matter, anything else that's fossil, can tell you something about 60, 70, 80, 90 million years ago. Now, paleontology is not just fascinating, it's not just cool, it's also something very relevant, it's also something very important. These days, we're worried. We're worried about climate change, about sea level rise, about biodiversity loss. Um, and in order to say something meaningful about the future, what you need is a very thorough and very deep understanding of your past. And that's where paleontology comes in. Right now, at Naturalis, we have a beautiful collection of dinosaurs. Every, everyone's there. We've got pretty much everyone's there. We've got the long-necked dinosaurs. We've got that guy with the big horns. We've got the spiny ones. We've got the hadrosaur, the, 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 the duck-billed dinosaur, if you, if you like. But there's one thing you'd notice in the current exhibition. They're, they're all herbivores. They're vegetarians. It's, it's vegan park. What we're missing is the big carnivore, the big guy at the top of the food chain. Maybe a T-Rex. Well, that's the goal we set ourselves. We want a T-Rex to, you know, to finish, to, to get everyone, to give you a good picture of the age of dinosaurs. So, that's easier said than done, but for T-Rexes, Western North America is the place to go. And I brought a couple of slides to give you an idea of uh, what it takes to excavate a dinosaur. It started all here with a few chunks of bones, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, we found ourselves at a ranch in northern, Monta uh, in northern Montana, uh, excavating a beautiful skeleton, and it really is marvelous. This is where the first chunks were found, and this is what happens if you remove a mountain and if you start to expose the bones, and, well, this is how they show up. It's, it's magnificently preserved. The rock around it is just as soft as you can possibly imagine. It was just... It took only two weeks to excavate an almost... Well, we got pretty much everything. Look at this. These bones, these are massive. It's a lower leg. It's part of the... And there's... Part of, the, uh, part of the shoulder blade. So this is how you excavate a dinosaur. You wrap it in a plaster jacket, and that's the head, that's the skull. One meter fifty. So here we're slowly exposing the bones, and isn't it beautiful? <laughs> that's my colleague Pete. He's about one meter eighty, and that's the, the skull. This is the skull of a T-Rex. and It's beautifully preserved. We've got pretty much everything. Now this is, this, is, this, is, this is so much fun. This is the back, that's the back end of the lower jaw. And you see these two little holes? That's where a tooth went in, two teeth. Actually, this T-Rex was bitten in the head by another T-Rex. And biting in T-Rex, this is a tooth of a T-Rex. It's a cast, it's a copy, but uh, it'll give you an idea. And, Look at the blunt tip. This is, uh, this is how you, well, demolish concrete with a jackhammer, right? And then feel these little edges, serrated edges. That's how you cut the meat. And I'll just pass it around so you can feel for yourself and let your finger run down the serrations and shiver. And then try to imagine what happens if that tooth bites you with a force of about you know, the weight of six little cars, or the thrust of the jet engine of a mid-sized commuter airline, airliner. So, it's, it's about 6,000 kilograms that was pushing on that tooth. Now, this is the ID, this is the, the image we have if you think about T-Rex. It's, it's something like that. It's the big, scaly monster. And if, this is just a Google image search on T-Rex. And the... One thing you notice is they're always with their mouth open. Doesn't make much sense. It probably, it probably wasn't the case. But the other thing, it's a big scaly monster. Now, 
the image, the ID that we have of T-Rex has dramatically changed in the past couple of years. T-Rex probably had feathers to some degree. The ancestors of T-Rex had, had feathers. We know of feather imprints, and it was probably also the case for T-Rex uh, itself. Maybe some feathers underneath the arms, maybe some feathers on the skull, on, on the head. We don't know for sure, but... Now, what do we have? We have a skull, we've got the neck, we've got most of the bones of the back and the ribs, we've got a right leg, and we've got quite a few bones of the tail. Now, why bother? Why bother bringing that T-Rex skeleton to Leiden? T-Rexes are rare. T-Rexes are very special fossils. There's not many of them, and there's only two skeletons more than 50% complete, and they're all on display in museums in North America. You won't find a real T-Rex skeleton anywhere else. So we're very lucky that we had the opportunity to excavate this T-Rex and bring it to Leiden. But why bother? Why not just bring a cast? Why not bring a plastic copy? That's much easier. It's not that expensive. It doesn't cost you that much of work. Well, obviously, we want the real thing. But it's important in, uh, in so many other ways. We'll go back to that fascination. T-Rex, or well, dinosaurs in general, are the, as I said, the horses, the time machines that take you back to the age of dinosaurs, that take you back in the past. And what we need is that fascination that fascination for paleontology, fascination for maybe fascination for natural sciences in general. And if there's one thing that uh, that dinosaurs, time and time again, time and time, show that it really, really works, the fascination of the eight-year-old kid for dinosaurs is just amazing. And with the new dinosaur hall, we really hope that we can spark that curiosity, spark that fascination, and keep that fire burning. I'm not saying we need hundreds and hundreds of dinosaur paleontologists, but uh, uh, <laughs> the fascination for natural sciences, the fascination for understanding our past, and therefore, in the end, being able to make some more meaningful, some more meaningful predictions about their future. That's what it's all about, and I hope that the new T-Rex will also contribute to that. Thank you very much.